As Democratic lawmakers have to be all types of delusional to support an argument that legislation needs to be passed in a bipartisan way, something that Senator Joe Manchin keeps arguing. It's time to really rethink our daily award for the dumb and the feckless. One of my prayers is that the Republicans will take back their party. Things keep dripping out, drip, 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 and the truth comes out. Over the weekend, conservative Democratic Senator Joe Manchin argued in an op-ed that he would not vote for election reform in the legislation known as the For the People Act and that he would maintain the Senate filibuster which blocks all the legislation that Democrats are trying to pass. Now he's not the only Senate Democrat who's in favor of this, he's just the most vociferous one. There's as many as 10 Senate Democrats who are in line with what Manchin is saying in that op-ed. Now Chris Wallace, a Fox News, a conservative Fox News anchor called Manchin out to his face on how delusional this is. Let's hear how that conversation went down. You have made it clear, and I'm not gonna ask you again, you said that you oppose scrapping the filibuster. The question I have is whether or not, and you say you hope that that'll bring the parties together. The question I have is whether or not you're doing it exactly the wrong way. And, and, and hear me out on this, if you were to keep the idea that maybe you would vote to kill the filibuster, wouldn't that give Republicans an incentive to actually negotiate because old Joe Manchin's out there and who knows what he's gonna do by taking it off the table. Haven't you empowered Republicans to be obstructionist? I don't think so because we have seven brave Republicans that continue to vote for what they know is right and the facts as they see them, not worrying about the political consequences. I believe there's a lot more of my Republican colleagues and friends that feel the same way. I'm just hoping they are able to, to rise to the occasion to, to defend our country and support our country and make sure that we have a democracy for this republic of all the people. I'm, I'm just very hopeful that I see good signs. We're doing, well, Chris, more things than ever before. Give us some time. No, but there is no time, there is no time. And when, you, when you're dealing with Senate Republicans who are bought off by Coke backed organizations that tell them do not under any circumstance support election reform, don't support anything in Biden's agenda. What makes Joe Manchin think that they would ever vote in favor of the legislation that Democrats want? What makes Joe Manchin think that they have any interest in bipartisanship? They don't, he knows that. He's funded and corrupted by the same Coke backed organizations which he's recently taken meetings with. There's no question about that. Read Jane Mayer's latest piece in the New Yorker, it'll give you details about a leaked phone call with these Coke backed organizations and Senate Republicans. But with that said, I mean, in that video, Jake, he mentions seven Senate Republicans who have voted along with Democrats. I'm assuming he's referring to Republicans who voted in favor of, I don't know, the, the commission, yeah. which by the way, you need 10 Senate Republicans to vote in favor of any legislation in order for it to pass. But when it comes to the coronavirus relief bill, not a single Republican lawmaker voted in favor of it after, after Senator Manchin secured all sorts of concessions, including cuts to the unemployment insurance program and additional means testing. They are not good faith actors and Manchin knows that. I just gotta give credit to Chris Wallace, turns out he's a journalist. Jeez, uh, it's crazy, right? Yeah, and I can't believe one of the very few journalists in America is on Fox News. And so, uh, yes, I don't often agree with this framing, but I don't often agree with the framing of almost all the cable news anchors. And here he is asking real questions that no other reporter has the courage to ask. So, I mean, this is such a simple question. How in the world do you believe that you're gonna get Republicans to vote with you. I would have loved a follow up question there where he said, Senator Manchin, are you familiar with math? Because you just told me seven senators, Republican senators can vote for the same thing. You know you need 10 Republican senators to break a filibuster and you just wrote an op-ed saying you'll never get rid of the filibuster. And that seven was on the easiest bill. Hey, they tried to kill us in the Capitol, should we look into it? And even then you could only get seven Republican senators. Seven doesn't equal 10. <laughs> right. And uh, and then. In terms of the no time point that Anna made, that's so important. Because if you wait too long, and that is Manch's plan, by the way, it's I also think it's Biden's plan. Biden is also against getting rid of the filibuster and takes no heat for it because of Joe Manchin. But if you wait that long, you know what the red states are gonna do? Oh, 
before the 2022 election, there's just not enough time for us to comply with the federal law. We're just gonna have to go with our current laws that say that most black people can't vote, right? Or some portion of black people can't vote, and some portion of college students and Latinos, etc., can't vote with all the past the votes we already and the laws we already passed in our state. Hey, take it to the courts. We'll see you after the elections, after we've already won. Right? Mm -hmm. Time is running out and Manchin knows it. He's helping his Republican friends as he calls it because he's not, look, he's not a Democrat, but he's also not an honest legislator. What's also pretty fascinating is that currently, I mean, all of these stories that we do about the current political climate are intertwined, they're all related. So currently we're seeing various red states restrict voting to the point that clearly advantages the Republican Party, right? Part of the reason why Democrats want to pass an election reform bill is not just to get money out of politics, it's to ensure that all eligible voters are able to go to the polls and vote. It includes same day registration, voter registration, all sorts of things that expand voting or make it more accessible to eligible voters. And it would obviously counterbalance or mitigate the damage being done by the voter suppression bills in places like Georgia. So you have corporate Democrats in the Senate, as many as 10 of them, by the way. Manchin just happens to be the most vociferous one. But you have as many as 10 of them who understand that their own elections, their own reelections are being jeopardized by what Republicans are doing right now. And they're still willing to go along with this farce. Like they're still willing to go along with these nonsense talking points that are so hollow regarding bipartisanship. Well, you know, if you're wondering why, I mean, it even endangers their own own elections because for the people act has anti-corruption measures and those corporate democrats don't want you to know who their donors are it would reveal the dark money donors and they also don't want progressives having grassroots money it has matching funds professor lessig from harvard is the one who came up with that idea and he talked about it on the young turks and how it was how it's monumentally important to democracy when corporate democrats hear that they don't take that as a positive they take it as a negative oh my god the only reason they win is because they have so much more money than progressives and they get it from their secret corporate donors so they're pushing Mansion out there. Go get him, big guy. Go get him. Oh no, no, yeah. Oh, so I don't. Want, I got nothing to do with it, man. It was Mansion. Joe Biden, your position is that you're for the filibuster. It kills your entire agenda. How is that in any way logical? Unless you don't actually believe in your agenda. But I want to say one more thing about that interview. Chris Wallace asked him if he was being naive in his position that the Republicans would vote. For with the Democrats. That's a polite way of saying, are you stupid? Mm -hmm. Because they ne they never vote with you guys. And Mitch McConnell has said that he is going to try to block 100% of Biden's agenda. <sighs> Cenk, you know what, Like, I'm gonna let myself indulge because we actually have that video, but I wasn't gonna go to it to save time, but who cares? Who cares? You guys deserve to see it. So let's take a look at that video. I mean, let's just take the nine. Uh, the, the, the idea of creating a 9-11 commission to investigate the January 6th insurrection at the Capitol. Uh, Republicans blocked that. Uh, Senator McConnell, the head of the Republicans in the Senate, says that he's 100% focused on blocking the Biden agenda. Uh, question, aren't you being naive about this continuing talk about bipartisan cooperation? I'm not being naive. I think he's 100% wrong in trying to block all the good things that we're trying to do for America. We get a lot better if we had participation. And we're getting participation. But when it comes time to final vote, um, I disagree with, with uh, Leader McConnell on this, a minority leader on, on this issue, that he puts politics before the policies that I think we need for our country. I'm going to continue to keep working with my bipartisan friends, and hopefully we can get more of them. I think McConnell's wrong. Okay, what are you gonna do about it? Just saying that you think he's wrong and you disagree with him doesn't fix anything. And by the way, he's saying that McConnell is wrong about McConnell's position. I'm pretty sure McConnell knows his position. He said, I'm going to try to block every single thing that Biden does. Uh, no, I don't really believe him. I think he secretly wants to help Joe Biden. <laughs> I mean, that's not naive, that's not even stupid, that's just a lie. Right, and look, I wish that Wallace, he did a fantastic job, asked another logical question, which is, look, what you're saying is completely unbelievable based on the votes we've already had. So 
What are you actually trying to do? Are you trying to protect your corporate donors? Because the people of West Virginia don't agree with you. Overwhelmingly, they don't agree with you. The Republican voters in West Virginia don't agree with you. Nobody agrees with you. And you're blocking bipartisanship. All right, so I wanna go to the Washington Post here because they actually show you what the real game is. And this is shocking coming from a mainstream media outlet like Washington Post, so I'll give them credit too. So first, they explain skepticism about flatly eliminating the filibuster goes deeper in the Democratic ranks than the much noted opposition of Senator Joe Manchin. Members such as Senator Gene Shaheen from New Hampshire said they are dismayed at Republican obstruction, but also believe that the specter of gridlock has been exaggerated by those pushing for rules changes. Garbage, absolute garbage. Well, they just they blocked the January 6th commission. How could it be exaggerated? They give you zero <laughs> votes on the COVID relief, on COVID relief. Jeez. That they passed when Trump was in office. Then they turn around and give you zero votes when you're in office. What do you mean exaggerated? What can they give you, negative votes? Okay, and then here, this is the real game. A Democratic Senate aide who spoke on the condition of anonymity discussed internal matters. Said there is a misconception that Manchin and Cinema are mainly responsible for holding on to the filibuster. In reality, the aide said, there are at least 10 Democratic senators who disagree with key parts of the bills that Republicans are filibustering. But quote, they just don't need to say anything crazy because Joe Manchin is out there taking all the arrows for them. <laughs> in other words, they were never gonna vote for it in the first place. So we sad. told you on the Young Turks, we told you before Biden even won, we told you after he won. While everybody else was calling him FDR 2.0, we told you they're not ever gonna pass those bills. They never intended to pass those bills. And here is the Washington Post confirming there are 10 Democratic senators that don't want any piece of that. By the way, the one time that we forced a vote they didn't want, that was on $15 minimum wage. And you guys did that, I swear to God you did it. it oh, tens of thousands of people signed our petition and sent videos into Bernie Sanders. He wasn't gonna introduce an amendment and he did on the $15 minimum wage. They had to take a vote on it. They were forced to take a vote. And how many people voted against it? It wasn't just the Republicans. Eight Democratic senators voted against it. By the way, they didn't even need it. They could have hid behind Manchin as cinema. But the other six were like, no, no, no. I, I can't have my donors thinking that I'm actually with my voters. No, I wanna make sure your wages are crushed, low, $7.25. Make $15,000 a year, working full time every day. Go back to the goddamn mines. That's what Chris Kuhn said, mm -hmm. top ally of Joe Biden. That's what both Delaware senators said. That's what G. Shaheen said. All these guys, they never meant it, they're corporate corrupt senators just like the Republicans. We told you and that's exactly what's happening now. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more, there's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air, so all that all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.